Have you ever wondered what gives real meaning to life and that makes you say yes to life? That's what we'll talk about today. When we're no longer able to change our situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. Viktor Frankl. Today, we're going to talk about a book from Viktor Frankl called Yes to Life. And Viktor Frankl gets a lot of attention because he found so much value in life after being in a concentration camp. He didn't move to another place so far away. He ended up staying in Vienna and becoming a professor there. And people wonder how when you can go through such a traumatic, horrible thing as being in a concentration camp, how can you find life appealing again? How can you say yes to life? And that's what really this book is about. Viktor Frankl came to this Yes to Life book from a song that all the inmates would sing inside the prison camp. And it was actually a song that the prison guards taught them to sing. But because the lyrics gave people hope and made people feel like they could get through it, they ended up taking on the song and making sure that they would sing it, that they would know that someday they would be away from the situation. And this book talks a lot about meaning, where Viktor Frankl finds meaning in things that a lot of people find difficult to find meaning is in. He found meaning while he was still in the concentration camp. He found meaning when World War II was over and times were tough. The economy was terrible and people were still suffering just in a different way, maybe economically, maybe in what life had been before. And they felt depressed about what had happened. And he said, there still is meaning in this. There still is a way that even if someone has an incurable disease, even if a person is facing a tough situation, you can always find meaning in it and find meaning in life itself, even when something is really drastically hard to take. He says that the best way when we have tough times to get through them is to, quote, show who we are. If we can't change the situation we're in, we can at least change how we adapt to it, how we talk to ourselves about it, and how we get through each particular day. He says that he was part of a school called Existential Therapy, which addresses larger issues of life, you know, when it comes to the big, deep things that philosophers talk about, suffering and meaning and death. How can people find the bigger issues of life when they're going through these very difficult times. And existential therapy is really what caused Frankel's view to take off in this movement in the 1970s and to really be able to see what is really important in life. People, when they think about the meaning in life, they think about situations like, is work what makes life meaningful? Or love? Is love what makes life meaningful. Some people who adore art find meaning in their music, their art, whatever they find beautiful in the world. It comes in through religion and faith. It comes in all sorts of different ways. And there's all sorts of thoughts about this, about whether we can find happiness, meaning in times when they're tough. And that brings up the quote of Kierkegaard, who talks about the door to happiness always opens outward which means that if we're happy, you can always walk out and not be happy. That's a very negative way to look at it. But the real question comes in, instead of looking at that door as being an exit ramp, can we figure out how a person adapts and takes on the challenges that they have that could give their own lives meaning, even if the fate is known already, even if the situation is really terrible, and give us something that really matters, really makes life worth living. Frankel worried about the fact that there weren't positive role models in the world anymore, and people seemed very downtrodden. He said that a lot of times in the past when you had activism, it came from a place of positivity. We could do better. We could be better people. We can make life better for so many others. When Viktor Frankl was writing this after World War II, activism was more about negativity. There weren't leaders to follow. There weren't positive role models out there who could give energy 
to movements to make things better. Instead, all of the activism he saw was out of cruelty and suffering and negativity. It wasn't so much we could do better. It was things stink right now. Everything is awful and everything should just burn in flames of whatever because we can't make this better. That negativity is interesting to me because sometimes it feels a little bit about where we are today, that so many different outlooks have negativity in them about what's wrong. We never start to look at what could we do better? How can we make and build on top of the things that are going correctly, but make them even better? And he really saw that this loss of positivity, this loss of enthusiasm and positive role models was destroying his society and the people around him. And it made people feel that life was too tough and it was hard to get any meaning out of it. He also saw a big materialistic view in his society where stuff could make you happier or stuff could give you meaning. And people were just consuming everything they could possibly consume, buying whatever it is they could buy. If I just had that treadmill, if I just had that Xbox, if I just had this fancy car, the bigger house, my life would be meaningful, happier. Everything would be going my way. And he saw it in his time in the 40s in Vienna after World War II. And that he thinks that people were just, quote, guzzling away without any thought about what was going on or what mattered in society in general. What was the really important message of what needed to happen to get back to a place where life had meaning? And by looking at life with an economic eye, we're just turning humanity into tools, a hammer to get a job done. And that's not what gives life meaning either. Our dignity And our meaning in life goes beyond what we can buy, what we can produce, and that we're never a means to an end. He says all the negativity towards society came from this idea that human life was worthless and really questioned the value of existence at all. Doesn't that sound like philosophy? Does life matter? Does existence matter? And of course, the answer is yes. He says that every day when he was in the concentration camp, They were told that their lives didn't matter, that they were not, quote, worth the soup. And he said that that would be bad enough that there were all sorts of other things that would make them feel bad, namely the atomic bomb and how catastrophic that felt. And so this feeling that everything was going in a bad place kept hammering away at people and giving them that negativity because the actions were based on the fact that there could be no progress other than to remove progress from other people, it just led people to feel that there was a lack of meaning at all. But in the end, each of us has to decide what kind of progress is actually real progress, not just outward progress of what we're doing in our lives, but the inward progress that we're getting somewhere in our lives mentally. Pleasure can't give us meaning but the lack of pleasure can remove the meaning that we feel like we have in our lives and sour us to everything. But in the end, that we're the ones that we're going to have to decide what gives meaning in our lives. And that is done through what he calls life questions, questions that we ask hourly of ourselves, because that's going to help us from a mental standpoint, be aware that nothing in the future, nothing that happens to us now can change the meaning of life for us. And that we don't need to know anything. We don't need to learn anything. We don't need to go anywhere because the meaning of life is the answer to these questions. You can ask, who am I? What is it that I can do? How can I give life meaning to my answers? And how can I give my life meaning through my actions? And that it doesn't in the end matter where it is you are in life, your location, your circumstances. But instead, it matters what you do with the life you have. What is it that you're going to make happen, where you can make it happen? And how are you going to fulfill the meeting every day with what you do and how you treat other people? Because each of us are irreplaceable, 
unique. We're different from every other human being on the planet. And therefore, the meaning of life comes from life itself, that we've been given these certain aspects in our lives. We are in a place in our special lives. And what can we do with it from there? Some people who have larger circles, more money, more influence, have more to do with what they need to do in their actions because they have more power to do things with their actions and more ways to fulfill their lives. So the answers are going to be different for each of us. What could each of us do that's more? What is it that's being left undone that we could do? And that's what's really going to do it. If we're unemployed, it's okay because we still have that same meaning in our lives, but we're just going to have to figure out in the position that we're in right now, what can we do that's more? What can we do in our actions? And how can we go about finding that meaning in what we do? Even if you're out of a job, that doesn't mean that you're out of actions. Maybe your action is finding a job. Maybe your action is doing some charity when you have time because you don't have a job. That's what's going to grant you that perspective of meaning. And that having a job, not having a job, having a lot, having very little, having food to eat or having no food to eat does not mean that we have more meaning, less meaning, that one is superior to the other or the other is inferior. In order to take on the things that challenge us in our lives, we have to answer the very specific questions of how can we fulfill the demands as people who act, as people who do things, and also people who love other human beings. He gives this analogy of a chessboard. Is it meaningful if a person is stuck in chess and they just throw the board on the ground and throw all the pieces against the wall? And that's not how anyone finds meaning in anything, in the chess game or losing the chess game. The question comes in, what are your actions? What solutions can you find? Or what can you learn from the situation that can make you better the next time you play? Throwing the board against the wall, scattering all the pieces, that doesn't do anything for anyone. Winning has meaning. Losing has meaning. Suffering has meaning or living in abundance also has meaning. And so we just have to find with our place right now in our situation, what can we do to make our suffering, make our abundance, make everything that we have meaningful. And we do that by taking action and loving other people. This I thought was interesting. He said that in the end, death gives us a compulsion to do so. If we never had to die and we lived forever, Would we have any compulsion to do anything, really? And it reminds me of a book and a television series that was called Altered Carbon. And the premise of this show was, particularly if you were rich, when you died, you jumped into another body. Maybe you had your own body because you were so well off, you could just make clones of yourself. So you'd never grow old. You'd never face danger. You'd always just jump into the next body. And there was all sorts of technological backup systems to make sure that your memories and everything got backed up and that you got placed into this new body when it was necessary. You'll see that the people who had these never ending situations really lacked any kind of meaning. They lacked any impulse to do anything, to get anything accomplished to take any actions other than just what felt right the next moment. And in the end, they all felt like empty vessels. They all felt like they lost their meanings in their lives. And he talks a little bit about that. Having an endpoint and knowing that our days are not unlimited gives us that impulse to find meaning in our lives and to keep striving to do better, to go farther, and to make other people's existence better too. With our uniqueness and with the fact that we are only human being of our kind in the history of the planet, we have an important job, and that is to use what we have, take action, and help other people and help ourselves. And he says in the end, quote, live as if you were living for a second time and you had acted the first time wrongly as you're trying to act now. So if you were 
in the situation and you're thinking about what, again, would have gone wrong in this situation, how could you go about doing better this time? Because it's exactly this aspiration of trying to be better, trying to do better, that makes our existence meaningful. And we have to take into account our own imperfections, our own negativity, our own ways that we just don't do things in the correct way. It's also in the ways that we're imperfect that makes us unique, that makes us irreplaceable. So when we think about our upsides, we think we're uniquely good at this or we're uniquely good at that, but it's also true in the things that we're not so good at. And we have to realize that we're irreplaceable in both ways. He talks of it in terms of an eye cell. So an eye cell can't be replaced by a arm cell, can't be replaced by a skin cell. It has to be the same eye cell because that's unique to that particular cell. It has a role and it has a job to do and it has actions to take based on what it is. And he quotes Hillel and says there's a dictum that was made by this founder of the Talmud. If I do not do it, who else will do it? But if I only do it for me, what am I then? And if I do not do it now, then when will I do it? He says in that statement, that's where we have meaning. And that's where we have our individualness. And he says in the end, the meaning of life is life itself. And so in summary, we have a life. We're individually created. We're uniquely made on this planet. We have a specific role to play here. And there's certain actions we can take, regardless of our circumstances or where we are. And the real meaning in life are taking those actions and taking those steps and making them valuable to ourselves and valuable to other people, loving ourselves and loving other people. My challenge to you is to write a list of three things that you could act on right now. What could you do that would really add to the meaning of your life? All right, I have to tell you, doing a podcast on philosophy is difficult. And our entertainment advice of the week comes from the movie Moonlight. At some point, you got to decide for yourself who you're going to be. Can't let nobody make that decision for you. And I think here he's agreeing with Viktor Frankl that no one can name you, meaning no one can tell you your purpose. No one can tell you what you're made of. That comes from inside. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I hope that gave you food for thought. It certainly gave me food for thought, and I hope you have a great week.